All right, so we're gonna step out of biomolecules now. There were four types. We talked about all four to the side with those, and we're gonna step back into solutions. So there's some more details to talk about with them, and now it involves numbers. So there is gonna be math here. But before we get into that too much, let's kind of introduce this idea. So what is concentration? So it's, you know, it's when you're thinking really hard, that's obviously one definition, but when it relates to solutions and in chemistry, what it has to do with is how strong a solution is. So you can have pure solvent, no solutes dissolved in it, and there is a maximum amount that you can dissolve. So let's say you're dissolving um, sugar in the water. You dissolve sugar, there's more and more of it in the water, and there's some way of keeping track of how much there is, and there's different units of that, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. But eventually you get to a maximum. And so we call that a saturated solution. And so what what a saturated solution is depends on what your solvent is, what your solute is, and, uh, and often what temperature that they are as well. But most often what we're working with is not a saturated solution and, and not just pure solvent, but because then it's not a solution, right? It's just solvent, but something in the middle. And so how do we discuss that with each other? How do we talk about that? Well, that's concentration. How much stuff is dissolved in there? So before we get into the units, let's make sure we got a good fix on what concentration is. So it's a measure of solutes. So that's the stuff that we dissolve. Dissolved into a solution or some amount of solvent. So we got to track two things for this often. We got to track how much solute there was, and then we got to track how much solution there is or how much solvent was used. One of those two. But we always have to know how much solutes there is. So how much stuff we're dissolving, and either how much stuff there was after it was all mixed and dissolved together, or how much we mixed it into originally. So there's a little bit of a choose your own adventure there. And so what we have is essentially it's always stuff that's dissolved over the total amount or the amount of solvent used. That's what we have. And another definition that you often see is uh, strength of solution. So the more you dissolve into a solution, the stronger it gets. Uh, so you get stronger and stronger. And if you don't believe me, just start pouring salt and water, stirring it up, take a sip, pour some more in there, stir it up, take a sip you'll start to taste that that salt is tasting stronger and stronger. It's a stronger and stronger salt taste because there's more and more salt dissolved. It's a stronger and stronger salt water solution. Or you can just believe me, whatever. Um, so that's what concentration is. So it's just a way of discussing how strong our solution is. You know, If you're working with an acid, there's a difference between working with a concentrated acid and a dilute acid, one that's not concentrated. I mean, there's still you still want to wear gloves and do all of that, but the amount of time you have before um, you get something really bad from a spill uh, can change drastically. So if you really dilute your acid, you spill some and it gets past your glove, you have some time to get to the sink and wash it off. You still want to wash it off, but maybe you have like a half hour or an hour to do it. Whereas if you're working with concentrated acid, you're probably not getting to that sink fast enough. Get longer gloves. Get those ones that, you know, get the... Uh, farm veterinarian gloves, get them all the way to the elbow or the shoulder, you know, it keeps going and going and going, that's what you want, you just, not getting on your arms then, get the little, you get the whole suit, um, we won't talk about why farm veterinarians have those gloves, by the way, that's a, that's a biology question, okay, so, we're going to talk about three units of concentration, so, I've given you kind of the vague outline, what, what do we mean specifically, so in this class, I want to be clear. There are more units of concentration. I want to be absolutely clear about that. I'm not giving you the end-all, be-all. But there are three units of concentration discussed in this class. There are two that are often used in the medical field that we'll talk about. And there's the best one. The one that the chemists use all the time. Um... And so that'll be kind of where the focus is. But we'll talk about the other two and how they're calculated and, and some brief stuff with them. So, number one, percent by mass. So 
So we have, or should we do percent by? I guess I guess we don't do percent by mass in my little online learning goals there. So we're going to go percent by mass over volume. That's a save if I've ever seen one. All right, there is percent by mass, but apparently, whatever, it's not in these learning objectives. I'm not going to pile on, because then I have to make that a four. That would be horrific. So, you know, I could just, like, make a new video or edit, but <laughs> no, that's not going to happen. Yeah, just roll with it. Okay, so percent mass over volume. That's what we're looking at here, so that's volume. And so what we have is mass of solute. So I always start with mass of solute, or whatever measure of solute. Could be volume, hint of what's coming next. Um, and we are going to divide by the volume of solution. And then we're going to multiply by 100%. That would be percent mass over volume. Sometimes it's just mass over volume. You see like grams per milliliter or milligrams per milliliter, something like that. So there's there's some, some tweaks on it from time to time. Um, it might also be seen as something like this. Percent weight over volume. There's different notations for it. Uh, online, on the uh, Moodle page, you'll see percent M over V percent mass over volume. So here's an example of how we calculate it. So, um, what could we do here? So, as an example, actually I'll just give you an example then we'll do a practice calculation. So, an example of a solution, if we have a 10% um, weight to volume or mass to volume in a CL solution, what we're saying is that this has 10 grams of NaCl, sodium chloride, so table salt, dissolved for every 100 milliliters of solution. This is what it looks like, you know, just as an example. Like if you saw a 10% M over V or W over V NaCl solution, that's essentially saying that there's 10 grams of our solute in ACL for every 100 milliliters of solution. And so that can give us a conversion factor to work with later. Um, but if we put that into practice, like we have to do a calculation, what does that look like? Well, Got to ask a question, right? So, what is a good good way to start a question? Why is a very dangerous word to start a question with? What's a very sound one? What is like? There's a thing. There's an answer. Why can be very oof, getting up in the philosophy building if you're not careful with the why. Um, so, not sure. I'll tell the story. Uh, my high school psychology teacher. I never took high school psychology, but all my friends did, and he'd always tell the story of the class. And I heard it through all my friends over and over and over again. Uh, I was obviously too good of a student to take something like an applied science in high school. I'm kidding, I like barely graduated. That's actually the truth. Um, so he would tell this story. He took a college philosophy class, and he studied really hard. The finals coming up, he studied, 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 studied. And then the professor handed out the exam, and it was one page. And it just said, it had a spot for your name. So it said names, blank. And then it just said, why, question mark. That was it. And so he thought really hard, and he's like, well, this philosopher would say this is why, and this other philosopher would say why, blah, blah, blah. And this, this guy sitting next to him turned his exam in like 10 seconds, and he's like, whoa, he's in trouble. And then they, maybe it was a midterm, because he somehow found out the guy's score, so maybe it wasn't a final, I think it was a midterm. So they get their exams back later. And uh, the, the high school teacher, um, psychology teacher, he got a B plus. He wrote like two pages of all this stuff that he learned from the book and all these different ideas from philosophers. B plus. The guy next to him that took 10 seconds, A plus. And what he wrote, according to the story he told, I mean, he could be lying. It's 
Those guys are psychologists. That they're professional liars. Um, I mean, literally, they're, all their studies are they, they have to lie to you if they know what, if you know what the study is, it'll influence the results. So it's like, what soda do you prefer? But really, it's something about like the chair you're sitting in or whatever. But anyway, the test next to him, the guy just wrote, "Why not?" and turned it in and got an A plus. So if you're frustrated by your science classes. You can always take philosophy. A plus is only two letters or two words away, apparently. So uh, the, it took thousands of years to get from like, oh, let's sit under an olive tree and talk about why there's shadows to actually being like, let's make a reproducible test and confirm why there's shadows. That took a long time, and hopefully we don't go back. Uh, but they still teach the courses, so uh, you can see you can see the angry grandfather of science or grandmother of science if you prefer doesn't matter. Uh, an angry grandparent is an angry grandparent, and what's the difference at that point? Um, and so, anyway, there's your fun story for the video. So, we're going to practice. We're going to start with what, not why, because then you could be like, why not 10% by volume or whatever. So, what is the concentration Of, uh, we'll say, I'm just making this up on the fly, by the way. 500.0 milliliter solution with, uh, let's throw 25.0 grams. We use the cheap Harbor Freight balance of sucrose. You guys know the structure of that now, by the way. We did talk about carbohydrates. You know that one. You could talk about the linkage, you could talk about the monosaccharides. To make this disaccharide. Some of you are already having horrific flashbacks to biomolecules, but just remember that this is the last section before the exam, so all that's fair game for that exam coming up, as well as everything I just mentioned. So, we got 25.0 grams of sucrose. Do we need to know all that for this problem? No, we just gotta know it's sucrose and there's 25.0 grams. Uh, and that is dissolved into it, it being the solution. And it's not a proper question without a question mark at the end. This is one of those questions too that maybe you start out like, oh, what is the concentration of a 500.0 milliliter solution with 25.0 grams of sucrose dissolved into it? You have to raise your voice at the end so you know it's a question. That's why I've always respected Spanish for busting this move. Because then you know, you're like, what is? You know, to start out with a question. I think you know, English is all about stealing from other languages. We should steal that one. The upside down exclamation point, it looks a lot like an I. Maybe we don't do that one. We can steal the upside down question mark, though. I'm game. And I'm going to even use it here. And if you've never taken Spanish before and you don't know what I'm talking about, well, you learned something halfway, figure out the rest. Okay, so we have to do a calculation. There's numbers. Oh my goodness, what do we do? Well, our formula... It's just our mass of our solute divided by the volume of the solution times 100%. So we're going to go percent mass over volume. How do you know to do this? Well, it's the only one I've talked about so far. That's a pretty good clue. And so it's mass solute divided by volume of solution. How else would you know this? Well, I mean, I could have specified the units that I want. Like I could have said what's the concentration percent mass over volume. Or you can notice I gave you a mass and a volume. That's pretty good. Okay, so take that, multiply by 100%. Coach says give 110%, but you know, chemist like you to get 100%. That's the most we're going to give you. So, what is the mass of the solute? We got a couple numbers here. Is that a mass of a solute, or is that a mass of a solute? Well, that has a unit of a mass. Grams is mass, milliliters is a volume. But also it says, literally, this is the volume of the solution. And so that's going to go underneath. Okay. And so this must be left to go on top. And we're going to multiply by 100%. Okay. And so we do that. And we're going to get some significant figures. We're going to talk about some significant figures here in a second. But we're going to get 5%. But is it 5.0? Is it 5.00? 0, 0? 
Well, let's see. This isn't going to count towards my sig figs. Just the measured numbers are going to count. This isn't measured, so we don't have to worry about it on sig figs. But okay, so I punch in my handy dandy calculator. I get a 5. Or if you've got a big brain like me, you did the math in your head. I didn't choose weird numbers for a reason, because if I'd made it like 17, heaven help me. I made it 25, so I could do this easily. Alright, so it's going to be 5 point something, in all likelihood. And so I've got one, two, three significant figures here. Remember that zero is significant. It's trailing with a decimal point, so it counts. We have one, two, three, four. That counts, trailing with a decimal, as do these zeros. So we have three trailing zeros that all count. So our worst number is three. We get three in our final answer. So it's 5.00% mass over volume. And then you put a nice box around that final answer. Which is definitely what you're going to want to do in an online multiple choice test. Alright, anyway. So, there you go. Um, maybe you have to do a calculation, in which case you just type it in. So you don't have to worry about boxing your answers. But it's a good habit to have. Think of your poor instructors that have to grade this stuff. So that's our first unit. And there's an example of how we would calculate. i got to give you a mass, i got to give you a volume, and you just psh, one over the other, and then multiply by 100%. Watch your sig figs. You're home free. Boom, boom, you got it. All right, so our second unit of concentration is going to be percent by volume. Also known as percent V over V. All right, and so this is going to be volume of solute over volume of solution times a hundred percent. This is what percent volume over volume equals. This is how it's calculated. So for example, a hmm what could we have? Uh, ten point zero percent by volume ethanol solution so this is the alcohol that humans drink recreationally there's methanol which is the one that humans accidentally consume sometimes it'll still get you drunk just takes out your optic nerves along the way there's two propanol it's another one but it's rubbing alcohol so that's just going to make you throw up uh, and if you buy lab grade ethanol if you get like you can get like 200 proof lab grade ethanol and people get all excited about this but generally it's denatured so it has here's my favorite thing so I had an argument with a colleague once about what it meant for ethanol to be denatured and he's like oh they put methanol in it I went that's insane they put they put rubbing alcohol in it like they can't put methanol in there it'll make you go blind and then and then I was like they put rubbing alcohol in there so that you throw up and then you feel sick and then you know you're not you're not drinking it and it turned out, so we had our little debate, and we looked it up, and it was both. They put both in there. So they put the one in to keep the smart people away, and to keep the other one in to keep the stupid people away. So someone's like, I don't care about my vision. I'm still going to drink it anyway. And they're like, oh, I feel so sick, barf. And then the smart people are like, I'm not going to drink that. It's going to make me go blind. <laughs> so um, that's, and that gets around, like, you don't have to deal with, like, ATF, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms, or the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. Because it's not, they, it's alcohol for consumption that they control. So, you know, if you need it for experiments, it's a very popular solvent. That's what happens. That said, back in the day at Los Alamos National Lab, when they were doing the Manhattan Project, developing atomic weapons, um, according, I wasn't there. Um, I was too busy defending my thesis in the 40s, sure. Um they apparently have some real ragers. They're out in the New Mexico desert. There's nothing around them by design because they're doing a secret project. They don't want anybody around. So they're just all stuck there together. And apparently their 200 proof ethanol, their lab grade ethanol, was not denatured. And so that was, yeah, that was what they used in their parties. Or at least, you know, so says some people that were there. I, I don't know. I read it in some books. First-hand accounts in those books. Uh, Richard Feynman to be specific, was one of them. Uh, interesting fellow. Anyway, so if we have a 10.0% by volume ethanol 
solution. Well, that means that it has 10.0 milliliters of dissolved ethanol. For every 100, yeah, we'll say 0 0.0 milliliters of solution. That's what we're saying. So that's what we can do. So we can say, we can set up a little conversion factor and we go, oh yeah, 10.0 milliliters of ethanol over 100.0 milliliters of solution. So these units of concentration, they're kind of like compound units. You can use them to set up these conversion factors just like we did before. So if you ever want to know like how much you need for something, you use those. And to put it to practice, like how would we calculate one of these? Well, I got to give you two volumes. And this is a little trickier because you got to pay attention to which volume you're putting where. But let me give you a, a big clue. If you do your calculation and you get over 100%, you flipped your volumes the wrong way, just so you know. Yeah. Solution can go from 0 to 100%. If you get like 175% by volume, that would mean that you'd have, for every 100 milliliters of solution, you'd have 175 milliliters of stuff dissolved in it, and it doesn't work that way for anything that I'm aware of. So, you know, what would a problem look like? Well, what is the concentration? I'll be nicer this time in percent volume over volume for a mm, 250.0 milliliters solution with mm, we'll say 25.0 milliliters of isopropyl alcohol dissolved into it. So great for disinfecting, although probably not at this concentration. Uh, not so great for drinking. Question mark. So, what do we do? Well, I need percent volume over volume, and I'm like, oh, I know how to calculate that. I remember the formula. I've memorized it. I've seen it for a whopping, I don't know what it's been now, three minutes. All right, percent volume over volume. Well, that's going to be my volume of alcohol, I'm going to be lazy here, so it's isopropyl alcohol, over volume of solution, times 100%, okay, so what does that come out to be? Well, I've got two volumes, which one's which? Hmm, I think this is my solution volume, maybe, looks like I have 250.0 milliliters of solution, so that's going to go underneath, that's my first number that's given in the problem. All right, and then how much stuff did I dissolve into? Oh, it looks like I had 25.0 milliliters. Yeah, so sometimes it helps underline our numbers, keep track of them. I know I'm using them. Where do I use them? Well, the small one's going to go on top. And also, it is the amount of solute that was used. How do I know this was a solute? Well, it was dissolved into it. I like to give you guys clues when I write these. Times 100%. All right, I've set up some very difficult math here. I know that's 10%. But how do I write that? How do I get to report my 10%? Well, it looks like I'm going to have 1, 2, 3 sig figs on top. 1, 2, 3, 4 on the bottom. So I get to keep 3 at the end. So 10.0% uh, uh, isopropyl alcohol by volume. And I'm not quite done because I still have to do that. Organization is very important. This is coming from the most disorganized person that's speaking into this microphone right now. So, there we go. So that's what this looks like. So it's a percent. So the first two I show you are percents. And these are pretty commonly used in the medical field and in pharmaceuticals and things like that. Now let me show you the good stuff. Let me show you what chemists use. And you are going to totally love this. There will be no hate here. There will only be love and joy molarity. Some of you might already know what this word means. Hopefully your skin isn't crawling. I like molarity. It makes my life easier. 
Uh, students don't always seem to feel that way, though. So molarity is often abbreviated capital M. And what this is is moles of solute. That's right, moles are back. Moles are back, baby. Over volume of solution. And it's going to be in liters. So we're going to specify the unit of volume. No times 100%. That's going to give us our molarity. So if you see a big capital M, a lot of students get the idea that that means moles, but it means moles per liter. That's going to be the unit. Moles over liters. All right. So, for example, if I describe a solution, um, what do we got? We got, you know, if we have a 0. 2.5 molar NaCl solution. What can I say? I like salt water. Who doesn't? I mean, what's better? A regular pool or a salt water pool? Am I right? I mean, come on. And what's better? Like, oh, you go to the Great Lakes? Has anyone ever been to the Great Lakes? They're pretty still and boring. I mean, they're always really cold. Or the ocean, right? The ocean's got the big waves, salt water. Very exciting. You can't, no, I'm going to tell you a secret. You can't surf on Lake, Lake Michigan. The locals will tell you there's waves. My mom grew up in the area. She thought those were waves. And she moved to California when she was like 20 and um, had an awakening. Put it like that. Uh, she found out what waves really were. Now, if someone's like in Hawaii, they're like, oh, you think you know what waves are in California? It keeps going and going. It's like people in Oregon tell people in Kansas, like, oh, you think you know what mountains are? And then Alaskans are like, you know, hold my rusty trailer or whatever. I have a lot of friends from Alaska. I can't help but make that joke. Uh, very nice people. Very nice people in Alaska. At least the ones that got out. I can't, I've never been there. I can't speak for the people there. But I'm sure they're just fine if they're listening to this on the internet. If dial-up has made it there yet. Oh, I just can't stop. I don't know what it is. Uh, I mean, they're surrounded by Canadians, so someone's got to be mean to them, right? Okay, so, if we've got a 0.25 molar NaCl solution, well, that means that it has... 0 0.25 moles of NaCl dissolved for every liter of solution. Okay, so um, that means that you know what we have is 0.25 moles. NaCl per liter. That's our conversion factor. And I'm going to do a, a whole video on where we just play around with molarity and do practice calculations because this is one that we can go forwards, backwards, sideways, up, down. So there's a lot we can do here. I'm going to expect more out of molarity than I am out of the first two units. Just know when you see them, have a rough idea how to do an initial calculation. Molarity, we're going to do some more work with. So just a heads up on that. And, and the homework's going to have that work in it too. So I'm actually helping you out with that video even though this one's approaching a half an hour already. Hmm. What can I say? What else do I have to do? Can't leave my house. And not because of like an ankle brace or something? You know, that little bracelet that goes off? That's not what I'm talking about. It's because, you know, people don't wear masks right now. Much safer here. Um, Alright, what do we got next here? Oh yeah, we're going to practice. So we're going to do one practice problem just to introduce calculating molarity. A very simple one. We're going to go much farther beyond this practice in the next video. Alright, so what is the molarity? So look at that. I just shortcut even saying concentration. I just say the unit concentration I want. Of a, hmm, let's say, 250.0 milliliter solution. I'll throw one slight curveball in here. See if you've already figured out what it is. I've only wrote one number, so there's something funny about it. If you're wondering, we're going to have to fix something here. That has, hmm, let's say, 2 moles, 2.0 moles of. Oh, what can we go with here? Um, let's stick with carbohydrates, right? So we'll say fructose. It's a fructose solution. Maybe it's you know, high fructose corn syrup or something. Who knows? 
Okay, so there's a sugar you're supposed to know. There's a name, there's a reminder, flashbacks, okay. Five member ring, yada, yada, yada. It is a ketose. Hopefully those words are all making sense to you right now. If not, you might want to go back a couple of seconds before you take the test. So, what do we got here? Well, molarity. Remember our formula. It's going to be moles of fructose, because that's our solute over liters of solution. Okay, so do I know my liters of solution? I've got a volume here, is that liters? Not quite, okay, I'm gonna have to do a little unit conversion here. Metric system, coming back into action. All right, so there are 1,000 milliliters for every liter, and so that means I'll have liters on top, 1,000 milliliters on the bottom these are one thousandth of a liter. So if I have a liter, I can say I have a thousand milliliters. It means the same thing. So I am multiplying by, by one, very fancy here. Milliliters are going to cancel. I get 0 0.2500 liters. So I'm not done, but that's my number I'm going to use right here. Do I know my moles of fructose? Yes, I do. We're going to play around with this more in the next video. It can get more complicated. All right, so I've got 2.0 moles over 0 0.2500 liters. And do I multiply by 100% here? No. No, I don't. All right, and I do the math, punch in my calculator, and I get 8.0, because I'm only getting two sig figs here, it looks like. Molar solution, big capital M. Doesn't get any easier than that. Don't need to write moles over liters. I can just write big capital M, because it means the exact same thing. Because, you know why? Chemists are too lazy to write moles divided by liters over and over and over again when I can just write a big capital M. So, these are the three units of concentration. So hopefully you remember solution stuff, you know, solution, solute, solvent, all that. And now we have three ways of discussing how strong those solutions are, how much stuff is dissolved in them. Because if you go like, oh yeah, this is a, a hydrochloric acid solution. Well, is it you know, is it concentrated hydrochloric acid or is it very, very dilute hydrochloric acid? Because how I approach that um, is going to change with that information. If I don't know, I assume worst case scenario. That is, that is safety. But if I know it's very dilute, you know, I can take it out of a fume hood, I can do other stuff with it, so on and so forth. So, um, you know, knowing, being able to attach a number to that is very helpful. It's like 0 0.0001 molar hydrochloric acid solution. Like, yeah, I should neutralize it before I dispose of it. Absolutely. But, yeah, it's not the end of the world. If I spill it, I just clean it up. Yeah, I don't have to, like, make sure everyone is exactly aware of what's going on. Um, fun fact, when I was in general chemistry, which, is, which was first-year college chemistry for me, I believe it was the second lab. I had a terrible lab partner, and he got scared by a Bunsen burner, I think. I mean, he got scared by a Bunsen burner a lot, so if he didn't this time, he would much more in the future when I was paired with him. Uh, but something startled him. I, I'm pretty sure it was a Bunsen burner. you got to watch out. They'll sneak up on you, apparently. And he knocked over a thing of, I think it was like 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid all over my lab notes. And, but, you know, it's a good thing I'm not a small person that hangs on to those grudges for like getting close to 20 years now. All right, so uh, we'll call it there. Good Lord, this is a long video, but I did introduce three, you know, key units of concentration as well as what concentration was and a whole bunch of stories because, I don't know, it's getting late at night for me, I guess. But, uh, you know, you guys know how to fast forward and skip around. So enjoy. Um, we're going to build on this more in the next video. So we're going to get into more complicated molarity problems because... Uh, typically you cannot just measure moles. There is not a molometer, but we'll talk about that more in the next video.